I want to welcome Mr. Khalil Kane to Power 88. This is the after party that is B-Tims and that is certified on the ones and twos. Welcome. What up? Welcome. <laughs> That's I perfect. appreciate you staying up for us. Oh, no, <laughs> you know, it ain't my bedtime yet. I'm still, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm on pandemic time, so. <laughs> Seriously. Sometimes it's two. Sometimes it's three. Sometimes it's four. Hey, Speaking of I'm, pandemic time, how are you spending your time quarantining? Um, reading and writing and eating. <laughs> I've been I've been in the kitchen. I've tried some new things, you know. Okay. Um, been reading some books. I've been doing a ton of writing. Um, I've been able to kind of dig back in the crates on the writing tip and find some stuff. I'm like, ooh. Maybe I should finish that. So, yeah, I've been doing, okay. doing stuff like that, you know. And um, re reconnecting with my family, like, on a whole yeah. other level. Um, yeah. Because now when we speak like this um, over video chat or when we're sending text messages or calling each other on the phone, there's, a, there's another kind of gravity to it right now. So I feel like... Uh, we did lose a family member um, because did of COVID. Did you? Our condolences. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, but I, I, my mother lost her sister, my Aunt Joan. Um, rest oh, that's peace. right. Um, so, yeah, they, they, there's been a different kind of, you know, gravity to, to our communications. And I think my family's become tighter, you know, more invested from this experience. Yeah, I that's think it's time to us up. Tied a lot of people up, man. Make you appreciate yeah. what you got right now. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. And my family's tight. I, I have a wonderful family. Um, so to think that we've gone to another level is uh, wonderful in, in, in my estimation. Well, I think it's great. Um, right now, I'm actually taking the time because, you know, our lives are like... Yeah. So the fact to be able to sit for a minute and, and just enjoy and actually relearn my children, I didn't realize how much I did not know about them because I'm on the go so much. So yeah, you want to go a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'll be honest, I'm ready to go again. <laughs> I, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. But but you you spent time with me, so you know that's really not my style. Like I don't yeah. you know when I when I've come into Vegas to work. Um, Nick was always like, well, we could go here, we could do this. And Nick, and he's like, what would I want to do? <laughs> Good. Let me get ready for tomorrow. I'm like, let's go. No. And I'm like, no, no. Oh. And and on a serious note, I mean, I would love, I would love for this to be like a light moment so we could all chill. But like part of the reason on some serious business of why I'm like, nah, you know, I'm good. I've gone out, I've had my fun. I don't really need to go out tonight. It's safety. We're talking yeah. about precautions. I have children. I have a family that loves me. Um, I have so many more things to do as an artist. No, it's not worth it. I yeah. mean, yeah. you know, we see right now uh, what can happen. And I take that seriously, Nick. You know, I'm not joking. Yes, yeah. it's, it's about nah. It's not really worth it. Um, I'd rather be safe. I know I'm safe at at the room. You know, yeah, I can have a drink, watch Sports Center, make my calls, but I'm good. Like I'm yeah. not trying to talk to no police. I'm not trying to talk to no knuckleheads. I'm not trying to get into no stupidity. And to yeah. see video of my man with a cop's knee on his neck, just yeah, I was gonna ask about that. Man. No, it's not. That's no bueno, man. I mean, I, what what are we supposed to say? It's not new. We've seen this before, right? The thing about yeah. it, and and Nick, you know me. You know this for facts. I avoid those situations at all costs, like yeah. daily. I yeah. try to explain to white folks that I know. You know, they think, oh, you know, Khalil's fine. I'm like, no. Every day when I leave my house, I'm worried. I'm nervous about the fact of, of any small infraction may put my life in jeopardy. When I lived in LA, man, one night, it was like two in the morning. I dropped somebody off, it was summertime. I had the windows down in my car. I had this badass muscle car. I had a 67 Chevelle. And this was like, you know, 15 years ago. 
<laughs> the cops rolled up on me in Burbank, man, with guns out. They was both sweating. It looked like they was smoking crack. I was like, yo, <laughs> take it easy. You know, um, and yeah. I hadn't done anything. Yeah. You know, they, they pulled me over because of the car and it was loud. And, you know, I might have been speeding. I might have had. I might have ran a red light. I might. I was like, it's cool. You can check the car. I was step. I was so polite. I was. You have to know how to interact. I mean, just to save your life. Mm -hmm. And I wish you know people would like understand that these are life and death situations. And I'm it tired. Really I'm tired of seeing it, man. Um, you know, something has. I hope everybody that's listening is registered to vote, and you're ready to do your part. I know you're not excited about the choices, but any choice is better than what we have in the White House right now. So please, <laughs> please. That's what I was going to ask you. I know you're you're Yo. very much involved in the political process. I was going to say, um, do you have like a message or any kind of encouragement to get those people because thousands yeah. upon Yo, thousands Yo. did Yo. not go out? You got to respect people that are going to not talk about it, but be about it. I will tell everybody right now, I'm voting for Biden. Okay. Right. I was in Charlotte. Um, what was it? 2012 uh, for the Democratic National Convention. And a reporter from CNN stopped me in the street. I was in the street. I was suited, bam, signing autographs, taking pictures with folks. They came up and asked me, are you voting for Obama just because he's black? And I said to the camera, yes. <laughs> no hesitation. The people that were with me were like, oh, God. Like, there was no, not word, a beat. I was word. like, yeah. yes. <laughs> they didn't expect that answer at all. That was, yeah, they didn't. What? <laughs> Next <laughs> question. Next question. Um, I'm telling you, like, I can't, I would, I feel like, in all seriousness, I could do a better job as president of the United States than that asshole that's at the White House right now, <laughs> like straight up and down. Um, I'm from New York City, so I've seen, I've been watching him do business for decades now. And not, I mean, regardless of the fact that he's just not qualified for that job, he's never ran for office, he's never held any office, he's never, like actually worked a job. Um, this is a man that was handed money from his father. Like he's yeah. an arrogant ass with, <laughs> who can barely read. Like watch, he's, he's got his finger on the page. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like the man can't read, it's rough. Um, and, and we're in danger because of it. A hundred thousand deaths that really did not need to be. I mean, it's yeah. dangerous. Exactly. This, is a we fool. Definitely... this is a fool. Like, <laughs> and, and we have to do something. So I would vote for Donald Duck over Donald Trump. Like, it's dangerous. I don't know how many more lives have to be lost before right. people wake up. And Black folks don't understand how powerful their vote is. And there's a lot of people that are going to say, no, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't... Yes, it does matter. Just to say stop matters. For anybody out there who's had anything done to them if you didn't tell that person to stop for months for years that's gonna sit in your gut like i should have said something i should have yeah. did something but when you know you said stop when you know you said no when you know you said back up you walk differently man um there's just a and, and as a people um Black folks in America, we need to start walking differently so so we're not getting the life choked out of us, you know, so that we can get that knee off our neck that's been there for 400 years. Like, come on, y'all, wake up, let's go. Like, November, if you're yeah. not registered to vote right now, I can't even talk to you. Like, I'm like, get serious. Yeah, well, serious. it's one thing of Power 88, and I'm like super proud of us because we definitely encourage, we've had, you know, voting, uh, rallies and campaigns and all kind of stuff. Yeah, y'all better get it together. <laughs> Tell them folks, man. Don't be lazy. Um, there, there hasn't been, I mean, right now, as we speak, they're shooting off tear gas, you know, in Minneapolis because folks are pissed Yeah, I off. saw that. Yeah. Like, I literally throwing bricks at cop cars is going down in Minneapolis right now. Yeah, but check this out. I mean, but, same Captain thing could be happening right in New York. What? Same thing could be happening right now in New York if, if, if 
the police had a went to Central Park with guns blazing, y'all would be in the same situation right now. You see what I'm yeah, saying? No so we, we got to really change up what's happening, man. But how? If, if yeah. folks don't show up. They don't I mean, show the up, reason, yeah. The reason why Donald Trump's in the White House right now is because Black folks really didn't show up at, right. the, at the polls. I mean, it was close. Oh. It was close. Well, I think people are now kind of seeing the value of their vote. I think that's, I don't Do think you? that there were still people on the fence, like my vote doesn't matter. And then I don't think they really thought that he so, could possibly make it to the White so House. So this is a man who's not wearing his mask on purpose, telling people not to wear, like, he's so full of shit. I mean, the, <laughs> Captain Twitter, he will tweet about the weather. He will tweet about golf. He hasn't said a word about this man dying in Minneapolis and, and anything concerning us. He really does not care yeah, about he, us. Yeah. Uh, if we're going to make him some money, he will take a picture and shake your hand and, and chill with you. If not, he don't care. I mean, his base, his base is, is white yeah. and, and yeah. anti-black <laughs> and as pretty much racist as you could get. I mean, I, I don't know. And there, and trust me, they're coming out. They're going to vote. They're going to be there. They're going to show mm -hmm. up in big numbers for that fool. So Khalil, um, I, I got to stop. I'm going to stop you really, really quick. You got time with us for a while? Yeah. Okay, we're going to get back into the mix. Certified. <laughs> I'm going to have them get back into the mix. We're going to come on on the other side. And we'll talk some more. Oh. Uh, All right, Sardi. I was feeling a little mix. You took me down memory lane. No, Khalil, Khalil went way back. He went way back. He got the beat boy stand for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you know about that. No, you know I'm some of look, I, I, I actually worked with the Rocks back in the day. I gotta be mad, real. Without that movie, I would not be a DJ. Like y'all made it. that movie real for it. me. Thirteen years it. old, watching that movie, and I was like, "Yo, I want turntables. I got. I want to be." You know, I, I wish you was the DJ because I like your style, how you could came off. <laughs> right. The day you know, shot the DJ battle, we had like, I don't know, 1,400 extras in the club. All what? the DJs was real with it. And like in between, in between shots, they was actually going at it. It was fire. It was crazy. Oh, no, I know that it was. was. A I know it was. Shout out to DJ Scratch, man. I know. Yes, I know it was. It was hot. It hey, was a great hey, sir. Sir, Yo. you told me the same thing about New Jack City, man. Wait, wait come on, which one? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, he did New it. New Jack City was gonna be if I if I didn't become a DJ, I was gonna have to start making them runs. But I didn't have to we, because you said it all. We've all so, considered it. At one point, uh, uh, it was GQ or Nino Brown. I, I guess I was a GQ. <laughs> <laughs> that was the same thing with the Wesley Snipes interview, man. If it went for New Jack City. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Okay, so speaking of juice, there's been several. Let me just look at my phone. Because when I tell you, I told our listeners, I said, well, DM me your questions. And probably 90% of them were about juice. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's I was like, look, I they love, love juice. People ask me, they're like, do you get annoyed that people still go like, yo, Raheem in the street? And I'm like, hell no, that was 30 years ago. The <laughs> fact that 30 years later, yeah. people still remember that character's name is fire. Yeah. That's mad love. That's crazy That's probably why the cops told you over in your surveil. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's He's crazy. dead. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, did you just yeah, rob yeah, a boy. convenience store, buddy? <laughs> nah, that was hey, on the real, tell, tell tell the people some other things that you've done because that's I mean you know you're known for juice. What, what else? Let people know what else you've been involved. If they if they love me from juice, that's cool. That's a classic. Good classic. Another classic. Love Jones. That's one of one of my favorite yep. um, films about our people. Like those were black folks that I knew. Those were black folks that I would hang out with. I was like these are yeah. smart, upwardly mobile, you know, cultured black folks doing their thing. Young, yeah. beautiful. Um, first day of shooting, I got to kiss me along. What? <laughs> I was like, no, 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 let's do this. What are we doing? You know, um, my hero, my hero. Come on. Yeah, man, that's good business. Uh, uh, for colored girls, 
That's that again. Now I'm, I'm bringing up for color girls because I want to do a little theater segue. Now for color girls, for those who didn't know, was an Enzizaki Shange play that is a classic. Um, celebrating the voice of the black woman, the, the point of view of, of the downtrodden black woman and what she goes through. And, and trust me, y'all know like I know how deep that can get. So that was not a piece about um, bashing black men. The way the play was done was she had these poems that the, the actors would come out and were these women in different colored dresses. And as they recited the poems, they would dance. So they would dance, it was a core. It wasn't even called a play, it was called a choreo poem. Tyler Perry decided he was gonna turn it into a narrative and like make this story. So whatever. But the fact that Enzizaki's voice was heard and that people, especially black people that were not familiar with this piece of art may now be introduced to it. So I love, I love the fact that I've been, you know, able to be a part of some of these projects uh, like Zoom Man and, and, and Renaissance Man, playing Tiger Woods and the Tiger Woods story. I mean, just stuff, like I, I couldn't, you know, girlfriends um, being able to portray uh, a really, I don't know, that was black love on TV. Uh, I, I thought like Darnell and Maya were really, um, beautiful together, you know? Um, so yeah. the opportunity to get to do those things um, has, has been a career, you know? Awesome, awesome. Well, one of our listeners, her name is Sonia. She's actually from New York. She said, how was it transitioning from film to TV? Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Cause the money's much better. And the schedule was dope. Like I, you know, I didn't know what the schedule was gonna be like. Um, and the schedule for half hour comedy is fire. It's like the best job in Hollywood. Um, so oh, okay. plus showing up to work when the boss, when the boss, like Mara Brock Akil, uh -huh. is really fly. Like she's fine. She's like <laughs> the whole package, brilliant, <laughs> super rich you know, young. Uh, so yeah, that was like a cool job to go to. You know, the, the, the ladies were wonderful. It was, it was a great job, missed that job. <laughs> but you know, they still playing it. So the checks, you know, those residual checks is cool. Thank you. <laughs> they are still playing it. Okay, yeah, I have another. Who needs a check? You got to kiss me alone. <laughs> right. Day okay, one. so I have another another comment. One of our listeners, her name is Toya Roberts, and she actually said that your father and her uncle are both a part or members of the historical group, The Last Poets. Yes. So she wanted me. Who's, she wanted me to say that. Uncle? She said her uncle's name is Doom. Yeah, Abiel Doom. Doom. Yes. Yeah, Abiel Doom. I'm like yeah. reading it right now because I couldn't pronounce yeah. it. I was like, how do you say that? <laughs> yeah, no, it's Abiel Doom. Yes. And my father, yeah. Gailen Kane, who was one of the original last poets. This is true. Um, That's dope. I just did a, a poetry slam a few days ago for the Negro Ensemble Company. Um, they they have agreed to produce a play that I wrote called Lambs to Slaughter. And that's gonna happen in May of 2021, but they're raising funds now and, and doing everything that they can to stay relevant as a theater company. So they did this poetry slam. And they okay. you know, first they asked me if I wanted to host it. And I was like, I, I, don't, I don't, I've never really been to a poetry slam. I don't know, you know, if I'm the per. They were like, wait a minute, your father's one of the original last poets. I was like, yeah. <laughs> they were like, and in the play that you gave us, it was like eight poems. I was like, yeah, but I wrote those. That doesn't mean, you know. So anyways, they talked me into coming in and spitting one of the poems. It was fire. It was great. Um, they raised some money. It was, it was a really hot evening. This was just last week. So this is coming, this is happening when? Oh, this next already, year? The play, the play is happening a year from now because we okay. don't know what um with all they this had stuff to shut going down on. A play that they were doing. Um Grandma's Quilt, they had to shut it down because of COVID-19. Um the the coronavirus hit New York and like yeah. all of Broadway shut down. Um yeah. theater, I mean, I'm an artist, so theater is like <clears throat> one of the last places 
where you can put up work that's really not censored. I mean, like doing girlfriends. I was surprised mm -hmm. at some of the things the network would tell us, like you can't say yeah. that. Yeah. You know, so you think we can kind of go in there and tell jokes and do our thing. No, there's meetings three times during the week where the producers come in, where the network comes in, and they tell you what you can and cannot say. The writers have to, oh, well, we got to rewrite that because we can't <laughs> think it that way. Um, whereas theater, um, especially off-Broadway theater, off-off-Broadway theater, those small theater houses, as, as Black artists, we can come in and really say and tell the stories that we want to tell, uncensored, and, and fill the spirits, you know, of people. You know, um, that's that's my thing right now. I've been writing a lot. That is cool. That is cool. So I'm excited. Um, so it's called Lambs to Slaughter, right? Yes. And it's going to be produced what is it? by Can you give us a little bit? Can you tell me a little bit about what's about? What is it about? It's um, the, the two <laughs> plays that I've wrote so far are about family. Um, and, and my experience uh, growing up in a Black family, uh, of little means, life was about survival. Like, it's not about, you know, oh, I'm thinking about going to either Yale or Dartmouth. And no, no, like, let's get, are we going to get through the next two months? Um, based on something that actually happened, my first, damn, my aunt Joan, who just passed away <laughs> through the complications of COVID 19, her firstborn son, Dorian, was murdered many years ago. Um, so the play is about a mother dealing with her mourning process after her child is murdered. It's one thing for a family member to pass away. It's a whole nother situation when somebody's murdered. Y'all know yeah. it hits differently. Um, so the people that are around you, um, need to surround you, you know, with love or, or we don't come back. There's a lot of people that I, I know are walking around right now, but have not come uh -oh. back. Is it his or is it everybody's? What? I'm oh, sorry. No. Did we lose her? Oh, she froze. There she is. Who, me? Yeah, what's yeah, your question? I was frozen. frozen. You guys yeah. were frozen. No, dude. No, we were going to Check your we were here. <laughs> you were frozen. We well, I was doing the Teddy slaughter. Riley freeze. I did Lamb's the Teddy slaughter. Riley freeze. I was like, that. Yeah. Yep. All right. I just want to say, yep. Lambs of Slaughter, because it was about a murder, don't think um, that it's like this, this ugly, dark piece. It's a little dark, but it has a lot of bad. Um, the, the sun spits these poems. Um, the band's playing along back in the mind. It, it's kind of fire. It's going to be a great night of sort of uplifting, because the only way um for us to survive these moments is for us to love each other you know so you see the mother get to the point where she allows the people around her to love her that way so that she can live some more um after this thing happening do you and do, well, uh, do you like writing and, and being more creative more, uh, more than being on the screen because you could put more of yourself into it and give more of your artistic value as far as well, uh, being a producer or writer I have to say, mo a, a lot of the work that's, that comes your way as an actor is not really what you want to talk about, you know? Right. It's not really right. where you're coming from. It's not really your point of view. So it's like, fine, a lot of times when, when the bills are stacking up, you go, yeah, right, cool, you know, I'm down, let's do that. Um, but, you know, for the most part, I mean, I've got lucky that, that I got to do films like Jesus and Love Jones where mm -hmm. you know I feel it and I understand it. And there's a whole bunch of other work stuff that I didn't mention that really wasn't my thing, you know, but I auditioned, I got it, it was a check, you do it. Um, but those are not your words. That's not where you come from. You find yourself explaining something to your mama about like, well, you know, no, <laughs> you know. They um, so as a, right, but as a writer, I can say what I want to say, you know, right, and right. being, at the age that I'm at now, if not now, when? Right. You know, how, how long are we here? You know, so you get to a point where it's like, if I'm going to say something, I better say it now. Exactly. Feel you. Feel you on that. Nick, you better ask. Well, I appreciate you. going to be mad. 
You said what? <laughs> Every, you okay. Questions being, because people gonna be. I wasn't gonna ask them, spoken. but because people are watching and they are listening, um, they want to know: Are you single? Uh oh. No. <laughs> answer or not? You could choose. No. You could answer or not. I'm just doing my part. <laughs> No, no, I'm not single. I've been in a relationship for 10 Khalil, years. Khalil, I apologize. We have this problem in, uh, you know, the, the section of the country I'll, out there. Khalil knows you. me. It's a problem. Khalil already knows me. It's a problem. He already knows. Okay, ladies, you heard that first. He is happily in a relationship, and we are all for that. Okay. 10 years. Um, and then... Money. 10 years. <laughs> Dang, I can't stand with nobody 10 minutes. Okay, that's a blessing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the next happy hour, top after hour show, we're going to talk about relationships. We're going to turn right, into very I some tips. Are we frozen or is it me? I'm not no, it's you and you. I'm, I'm okay. ready to answer these questions. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Answer some more. <laughs> Next one. Look, this one is so crazy, and I'm only saying it because it was actually written, and it's ridiculous. But, I mean, oh, I know you've answered it several times. How was it working with Tupac? Who? <laughs> <And Juice. laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Man, if y'all don't go YouTube that, that's what it is. He had a great face for a good man. Do that. Who? <laughs> um, look, uh, Pac's a legend. When we did Juice, we didn't know he was going to be a legend, but he knew. And he told us every day. Uh, he was a beautiful human being. Um, one of one, still an inspiration to me. Um, we were young. We were very young. I looked at a 19 year old kid, look me right in my face and tell me, this time next year, I'm gonna be a millionaire. I told him to shut the hell up, my man. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> you laid up. So, like, when you know people that get down like that, yeah, please, love it, love it. Yeah. I gave him all the props. I still give him all the props. That, that dude was a warrior. All day, every day, he was crazy in a in the most wonderful way. Um, you know, he moves people every day. If you were in the room with Pop, it was on. Like he made sure of it. Like it was never like not. And it was there was a lot of love, whether it be tough love or or you know hugs and all that. Um, he was super smart, hugely talented, um, and was never. Man, there are those people that just won't hold their tongue. Because there are times when, when we need to just chill. No, no. So, <laughs> so but I, you know, but I even appreciate that because I have I have the problem sometimes and I'm I'm really kind of over it of of being polite. Pop knew he didn't have time for that. And he always talked about dying young. So, you know, he got a lot done in the short period of time that he was here. And God bless him for it. I hope that answers well, it. Was, you I did ask my so question. The what? I heard he actually tried out for another part, but because he was so talented, they put him in the role that he was in. Is that true? Nah, Pac wasn't even really there to, to you know, audition. He rolled up with some other folks. And, and, right, and right. That's straight up was like, true. no, can, can I get down? Like, can I read? Knowing, I mean, like, he went to school for it. Like he knew he was fire already. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I'll tell, I've said it before, if not for Pop, I probably wouldn't have been in the film because they had us wow. all in the same room, you know, reading together. Like they would take four people here. You read, you read Steele, you read Raheem, you read Q. Uh, okay. So I'm looking across, I'm like, yo, if I'm gonna be in this movie, I'm gonna have to be, as good or better than that dude right there. <laughs> so my whole game lifted up because he was coming with like he wanted to be in that in that film. Like I would when I showed up, I was auditioning. Pac was in there to get a role. Like he knew wow. what the stakes were. He's like, if I get this, I'm gonna be a star. Like 
I was just like wanted to get a job. There's a big <laughs> difference. Big difference. <laughs> wow. Well, I want to thank you for taking out the time and joining us for the happy hour. Actually, we are happy happy hour, but this is the after party at Power 88. Tell our listeners and our fans, how can they follow you on social media? Yo, I'm on Instagram and I'm on Facebook. I don't really do Twitter because Donald Trump ruined it for me. Um, I, it's one of those things. <laughs> if he does it, I don't want to do it. Um, I'm <laughs> So everything, everything, everything is under my name because I, you know, it's under Khalil Kane because I don't really believe in, you know, doing all that other stuff. Anyways, Negro <laughs> Ensemble Company, NEC. Yes. If anybody wants to donate anything, go on Cash App, NEC Cash Now. It's a wonderful black theater company that's been in existence since 1967. So many actors that are world renowned and work that you know has come out of this theater company. Um, okay. I'm gonna do everything in my power uh, to make sure that they survive this pandemic because there's a lot of stuff that's gonna go away, folks. A lot of stuff that yes. you love and that's for you, that's for black mm -hmm. people is gonna go away because of this. I don't down. want the Negro Ensemble Company to be one of them. So right. check it out. Do some research, find out who the Negro Ensemble Company is. They're gonna be doing my play next year. And if you can donate anything, $5, 50 cent, donate. Make sure they stay alive. I love everybody. You know, well, year. make sure you give me that information or that link and then we can, we can add it to us as well. Yeah. Love it. Thank you. All I right. Thank you. Right on, you stay safe, stay healthy. Good to see you. Much love, brother. Love. Right on, man. See you later.